Hey guys, it's Sandro here from Carcraft Auto Detailing in Melbourne. Today's video is part 3 of how to professionally detail the vehicle. In parts 1 and 2, we looked at gathering all the information about the vehicle, performing a pre-inspection and creating a workflow plan of attack, as well as detailing the wheels. In this part of the series, I'll be going through the wash and decontamination process of the paint, as well as a post-wash inspection to identify and assess all the problem areas that will require more work to restore. So step one is to get the wash buckets and foam lance ready. I use the same decontamination mix of chemicals I covered in part two for the wheels. About 100 mils goes into the foam lance and that's filled two thirds with water. And about 50 mils goes into the wash bucket with a grit guard and about another 25 mils goes onto my Geon Smoothie wash mitt. The wash bucket is foamed up with a stiff stream of water and the rinse bucket is filled only halfway to help keep the contaminants below the grit guards. The next step is the pressure wash. Obviously it's far better to work on the cover or in the shade, but when that's not possible, the next best thing is washing in the early morning or late evening when the sun is low and the paint is cool. And on a side note, I'll take my method of washing in the open over the local shaded car wash any day. The idea is to try and remove as much dirt and contaminants as possible before making contact with the wash mitt, thus hugely reducing any potential scratches that are going to create more work for me. I've actually been told by a couple of detailers that it doesn't really matter if you scratch the paint because you're going to be polishing it anyway. My response is that I'm in the business of removing scratches, not producing them. I work from top to bottom and I'm always conscious of the water pressure and how close the beam is to the paint. Onto the pre-wash foam. Personally, I like the foam to be fairly thick and to cling to the paint for as long as possible. I know there seems to be those who like that snotty consistency that runs off the paint after a minute or so. But my experience has shown that the longer the decon wash chemicals cling to the paint, the better they soften and break down the contaminants. And I also know some people that like to rinse the foam before actually hand washing. But again, I've tried that many times and there is no benefit in my experience in doing that. In fact, the complete opposite in my opinion. As I've mentioned before, water is primarily a solvent. The foam is what really aids in producing a far safer and more effective wash. So rinsing it off just makes no sense to me as the paint is no cleaner than before. Next is the hand wash. I like to always add a good amount of foam to the wash mitt Start with the roof and basically work my way around and then down the vehicle. I generally wash half a panel, then flip the mitt and continue the rest of the panel and rinse the mitt before starting the next area. I use very little pressure with straight strokes overlapping each other and when needed, I'll go over a panel a second or third time. On some vehicles, I use a soft Swiss Fax brush to loosen dirt in areas such as grills headlight housings and around rubber seals before hand washing. But for this particular detail and truck, it's just not necessary or effective. So really, it's pretty much your standard two bucket wash method. And I continue to use it for the simple reason that it works well, is safe and effective. Also, depending on the weather, I will sometimes rinse down the vehicle a couple of times while I'm still hand washing to stop the detergent drying on the paint. And once I get to the dirtier lower panels, I'll rinse the mint more frequently and work smaller sections. I've seen and heard of a few other washing methods, such as you use your wash mitt and then pressure blast your mint after each panel. As well as the multi mint method, where you use a new or clean mint for every single section. I'm sure that they are all safe and effective, and if they work well for you and you enjoy their process, I say go for it. 
onto my final decontamination process. As I said in the last video, I've adopted using Concours Car Cares Purify as both my iron removal chemical and my clay lube. So now I combine those two steps into one. So basically I work a panel at a time, also working from top to bottom as with almost every process I do, as it not only makes sense to work with gravity rather than fight it, but it's a great way to stay consistent with the many processes I go through when detailing a vehicle. And it's a good way to safeguard against missing a section when you keep your processes the same each time. So Purify is evenly sprayed over the panel, given a minute or two to start working, and then I'll start claying as per normal, using straight overlapping lines and going at a steady pace. If I'm working outdoors, I'll usually wash and rinse down the car again after the iron and clay barring process. But if I'm indoors, like I am with this process, I'll wipe off the excess residue with a microfiber cloth and then use a waterless wash method to clean each panel as I go. I'll always feel each section to make sure it's smooth and free of contaminants. And if necessary, I'll repeat the iron and clay burring on a panel until it's to the standard I'm looking to achieve. I also use this iron and clay barring process to prepare the glass and certain non-porous plastics that respond well and benefit from it. Lastly, for part three of this series, is the post decontamination inspection. Whereas the pre-wash inspection helps me gain a feel for what the detail will involve and aids me in quoting a price, the post-wash inspection, at least for this particular detail, is going to greatly help me identify the areas that are going to be either touched up, wet sanded or need a further stage of compounding before polishing. So as I stated in part one, this job is more or less a one stage enhancement polish that is going to include some isolated touch up and scratch removal as well as some light metal polishing. So for me the best way to attack this is to firstly identify all the areas that will need wet sanding, do that then move on to the touch up and after that I'll get into any heavier compounding needed to refine the sanding and the touch up before finishing with the polishing step that the whole paint will be subjected to. Ultimately, the vehicle should have been in for a two or three stage correction due to the excessive amount of heavy defects that it has incurred. But due to the budget and even more importantly, the slightly thin paint together with the owner's want to remove as little as possible paint, this is the best custom detail I could offer him. And as much as we as detailers would love to impose our own personal or professional opinions on what should be done, it's really about catering to our clients' needs and budgets. Incidentally, the marker I'm using to highlight the defects is a wax-based pen that comes off with water. I'll also leave some links in the description box to some of the products I've used in this video. So that's it for part 3 of this series, look out for part 4 coming out soon. I really hope you enjoyed and found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe to show your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.